We're excited to welcome back to the show our friend, Larry Wingett, who's known as the pit bull of personal development. Larry's the author of six national bestsellers, the host of A&E's Big Spender, and a veteran of thousands of other TV and stage appearances. He specializes in personal, financial, self-help, and uses a tough love approach to help everyday Americans take charge of their financial future. Larry, welcome back to the Income Generation. Oh, I appreciate you having me, thanks. So do you find, as I do, that you know most people when they retire really want to live a simple retirement? Most people don't want to buy a second home or, or, or buy a boat or anything like that. Is, is that just me or do you see the same thing? No, it's just you. <laughs> no, okay. I'm serious. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Oh, okay. And I have people around me who are retired buying multi-million dollar homes. Oh. And uh, so I'm not buying into the fact that when people retire, they want to live more simply. I see people spending way too much money in retirement for some silly reason. Well, you go to dinner on any given restaurant on a Monday night. Heck, you can go to McDonald's on a Monday night in Scottsdale and you see Rolls Royces and Bentleys parked outside. So <laughs> take, take yourself out of the realm of Scottsdale for just a moment. Okay. As I take myself out of the realm of Southern Florida, we have the same thing here. Um, and, and, you know, we're talking today about our show, about those people specifically who want to do something we call retiring small. In other words, they want to shed as many fixed expenses as they can, downsize their home and everything else. Not because they want to retire cheaply, but because they want to be able to spend that money on things that bring them passion in life, be it travel, be it spoiling grandchildren and things like that. So there put you yourself in that mindset for just a moment here. And, you know, what do you find today are people's biggest decisions and hardest decisions they have to make when they retire in terms of whether the dollar goes here or whether the dollar goes there? And how do people make those decisions outside of Southern Florida and outside of Scottsdale, Arizona? <laughs> all right, we'll remove all those places and talk about regular folks in the rest of the country then. What, here's right. the biggest problem I'm seeing is that people want to retire more simply and they do want to cut back on all those other kinds of expenses. However, I saw a study recently that said that almost two thirds of baby boomers, people approaching retirement, some of them already in retirement, are financially supporting their millennial children in some way. Mm. So the first thing that you have to shed is the dependent children that are grown and should be taking care of themselves. That would be the, where I would start. Now, some would say to you, gosh, Larry, that's easier said than done. You know, Papa might say, kick the kids out of the house so we can go on more cruises. But Mama's going to say, uh-uh, there are kids, we're not going to do that. So, Mama's wrong. Okay, that's simple. Mama's wrong. Well, Mama's wrong. Here's the deal. The goal of parenting is for them to go away. So you should have raised your kids with the ability <laughs> to thrive and survive on their own at some yeah. point in their life. And to support them uh, while sacrificing your own retirement, I think is sad and does your kids a disservice. Sure. And it does a disservice to your spouse who you worked hard to get to the place where you're finally able to say, let's not go to work anymore. Let's not we're not in a place where we can uh, uh, rev uh, bring in any new revenue, generate any new revenue, and we're going to enjoy our lives. Okay. And you can't do that when you have so many nope. things that are dragging nope. you down. And that's just fair, a place to start. Fair enough. Providing the children don't have any disabilities of sorts, you can push them out, kick them out of the nest, if you will, make them fly on their own, and they might be stronger because of it. But how about the members of the sandwich generation who have the opposite problem, who are caring for parents? You know, in the 60 seconds or so we have left in the segment, how do you handle that? That's not as easy. That's not as easy. That really isn't as easy, and I will totally agree with you on that. I'm much more uh, uh, sad for people who are that sandwich generation, and they're stuck between both sides, and now they're stuck with aging parents, and they have to do whatever it takes. And they, that's your mom and your daddy out there. You need to do what it takes. You know, there's only two ways to have more money, and that's increase income or decrease expenses. So you're going to have to go somewhere else to offset your expenses so you're able to take care of your aging parents. Yeah, sim really simple, uh, and you're right, you either have to work longer or, or cut other expenses and be more conservative in other places, yep. um, or if you're in a place where you feel pretty confident that there'll be an inheritance down the road, which I always get nervous depending on, then, then you know, maybe, maybe that helps. But so, so Larry, you have 
held true here to be the pit bull of personal finances and having a tough love approach, telling people to kick the birdies out of the nest. I love it. Stay with us, Larry. We'll be back for another segment. Um, right. And you stay with us, too, our Income Generation viewers. A lot more in terms of words of wisdom for our good friend, Larry Wingett. Right now, let's welcome back one of the Income Generation's good friends, Larry Wingett. Larry, you've written a book uh, more recently, uh, and I want to make sure I, I, I get this straight here, entitled, What's Wrong with Damn Near Everything? Why is it I have to cuss on television just to read the title of your book, Larry? <laughs> What's Wrong with Damn Near Everything? How the Collapse of Core Values is Destroying Us and How to Fix It. Now, this happens to be uh, a topic near and dear to my heart because uh, my book, Return on Principle, talks about core values in the subtitle also. So tell me, what is it you think that's all screwed up today about people's core values? You know, there's so much. We talk about honesty. If I went out and asked every parent, do you believe that your kids should always tell the truth or always tell you the truth? They would say, absolutely. I want my kids to be honest. And yet 27% of Americans cheat on their taxes. So we've made our core values conditional. We've made them situational. Tell me the truth, but not if it saves me a little bit of money on my taxes. I think that's wrong. When you look at honesty, uh, let's look at our politicians. Do they tell us the truth? If we're voting for people who are dishonest, then the core value of honesty doesn't mean much to us. Those are just a couple of examples about core values. Yep. I think the values of honesty, integrity, a strong work ethics, kindness, just flat out being a nice person, I think we're seeing those destroyed every single day. We don't have much respect for people anymore. And that shows up in so many areas of society. It's funny I wrote too. today, on, go ahead. I would say two of my core values are in line with yours. I call it diligence instead of work ethic, and I call it honesty. But it seems to me like the most difficult thing when it comes to honesty is people being honest with themselves. You know can I really afford to retire at this rate? Not, not whether or not people are know, can do the math, it's a question of being honest with themselves. Am I saving enough? Am I gonna be okay? So in the final minute or so we have in this segment, tell me, how do you get people to be, if anybody could do it, you can, but how do you get people to be honest, brutally honest with themselves? Well, when it comes to money, money is very simple in my opinion. It's logical, it's not emotional, and anything that's logical can be tracked. So people should get out a sheet of paper and pencil and write down where they are. I've been working with people on their finances for a lot of years, and I've yet to find anybody at any income level who knew exactly how much they earned or had on hand and exactly who they owed and who they owed it to. So when you get a good grasp on your finances and you can look at them on, on a sheet of paper in black and white, that's the time to get brutally honest. And it's when you also can start to track your expenses to say, did I really need that? Do I need to keep spending in this way? Have I uh, let my appetites outgrow my, uh, my money? And that happens a lot. So it's time to get honest, but you can't do that when you're only using your mind. You have to know, and you only know sounds when like, you write it down. Sounds like tough love all over again. Larry, thanks for being with us today. I really appreciate it.